social media ROIC chip which you have right now. This is everything that you need to know in order to justify if you have management to answer to. This is all that you need based on your goals. Right? So if your goal is to increase brand awareness, this is it. First question that you ask yourself. This is how it works. Oh, sorry, by the way, let me sidetrack for one second. This thing was not done by us. It was through my friend. His name is Jay Bear. Uh, if you want to find out more about him, you go to his website, teachtofishdigital.com. I think it's over there on the notes also. So the first question, if your goal is to increase brand awareness, is to ask yourself, do you have web analytics installed on your website? Do you have a website? Right? Oh yeah, again, <laughs> let me sidetrack a bit. Why some of the things here are in grey and in black is because to answer the question, right, if it's, it's just a yes, no answer. So if it's yes, you measure through all this. If it's no, you measure through the black ones. Okay? So first question is, do you have web analytics data? Things like Google Analytics. Right? So if you have Google Analytics installed GA, uh, you can measure the site traffic. Is there an increase in site traffic from Facebook, Twitter, or all the social platforms you are in? And to, jo to justify that with your management, you can compare with the amount of money that you're either spending on SEO or on AdWords. If you're spending too much money, say uh, say about 30% of your traffic comes from AdWords. That's a lot, by the way, right? 30% of your traffic comes from AdWords. Are you paying like what? $2,000, $3,000 a month compared to Facebook if you get more visitors, like maybe another 30% of your traffic comes from Facebook but you're spending less. So it makes sense for, to keep focusing on Facebook. Why? Because this is one way to increase brand awareness. Second one is number of new site visitors. So it's pretty much the same. How many of the new visitors come from Facebook or Twitter or any other social media platforms again? And if you don't have any analytics installed on your website, then you measure the number of links that link back to your website. Google recently had the Panda update. Are you aware of that? Okay, you guys are not geeky enough. That's fine. Uh, so inbound links, so you measure by inbound links. So if more, other, more sites through your social media campaigns are linking back to you, right? then of course, that means more people are talking about you. So which means that if people are talking about you, they are what about you? Interested. Interested, but also aware, mm -hmm. right? So that's the first question. Second question is, are you creating content as part of your social media program? This is pretty straightforward. Of course, it's yes, right? Otherwise. What's the problem with Facebook anyway? No content. So we go by, we measure by number of views of content. Uh, I'll go through with you one example. If you are on Facebook, for example, if you're on YouTube, we measure by number of views. Uh, but number on Facebook, right, you measure through this. Well, maybe you need to change the screen to the right. No, no, it's because it's <coughs> right. So this is how you measure. Like every time you put up a status update on Facebook, it will tell you the number of people who have seen this, and unique number of people. So if you have about what seven thousand fans, right, and then you reach about five hundred of them, it's a good number to work with. Why? Because some of them have seen your content. To but if you're asking me about benchmark, like what's a good number, it's really hard to say. It depends on your market, it depends on your niche, it depends on your, on your fans also. But for us, the, our clients are pretty happy also. Because out of 7,000, previously, before they worked with us, each kind of content that they throw up on their Facebook page, they only reach about 15, 20, 100 the most. But with so us, you think people reach that number? That means the number of people who've seen their status update on their news feed. Mm. Yeah. As in. That means the first thing that you learn on the Facebook, right? Is oh, let me pull this out of the screen. The first thing that you learn on the Facebook is really your news feed, right? Mm -hmm. Like this. Oh, so so if it appears, it's considered seen. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Right. So this is so that's how they consider yeah seen as in seen as in they scroll down and then it appears on your screen. If it, if you don't scroll down, then you don't see it. It's not considered as one person who's seen it, right? Oh, if you don't scroll down, it's not like an impression where it's yeah. counted. In the past, they come by impression, but not anymore. The new insects, yeah. 
So this is the second one, number of views. Because how does this relate to brand awareness? If they see your content, it obviously means they are aware of you, right? Pretty straightforward. If it's like, I see Linda, I'm aware of such a person that is in existence, Linda, right? Uh, third is, third question to ask is, is there social chatter about your company? So if you are a big brand, for example, people are inevitably going to talk about your brand on Facebook profile, on Twitter and all that. So this one, you have to go back to the step which I shared with you earlier, social media listening. So you measure the number of increased conversations. The first one, if there is, you measure the number of increased conversations about your brand. Like, say, during your campaign. So prior to your campaign, which is why this is one of the first step listening first, right? So say if I'm the brand Zara, right? Have you guys heard of Zara? Right? Because of ladies, yeah. Yeah. So if you're Zara, before you go on the social media, on average a month you get about 5,000 people who are talking about you. Right? That's before you're on social media. Now, if you go onto social media, when you start your campaign, you measure again the number of people who are talking about Zara. If it's increased, it means that they are aware of you because they're talking about your brand. If you don't, if you don't measure the number of uh, social chatter, the other way is through the search volume. So say, um, and how you measure through the search volume is through this tool called Google Insights. Questions meanwhile? Any question marks? <coughs> Any questions about what I said so far? I, I don't see the thing you're talking about, the fan over her, right? Oh, you need to be a admin of your country. I am admin. I don't only see impressions. Impressions? Yeah. Okay, later on, come up doing it. After this, we take it off, right? Okay. Okay. Carry? Yeah. But please remind me if I forget. I will remind you. Good. <laughs> All right, so this is what I mentioned about uh, search volume, right? So if, say, the last few months, each month there are about, say, about 100 people that are searching for you on Google, then you want to mention, so say, if April or May is before you start your social media campaign, and then after, when you start your social media campaign for three months, you want to mention, is there an increase in the search volume? Because research is done before by this group of, another group of nerds uh, called Group M. They, they have this statistics that showed that if, when somebody's connected with you on social media, the likelihood of them searching for you on search engines is 2.8 times higher. So if, uh, Frank, you, if you and I are connected on Facebook, the likelihood of, if you're a brand, for example, and we're connected, the likelihood of me searching for you is 2.8 times if we did not, if we did not connect with each other on Facebook. Get that? No, no, no. If we're not, if we're not connected on Facebook, I wouldn't search for you at all. Exactly. If we connect on Facebook, it's 2.8 times zero. 2.8 times higher than the average. If Because on average, there are people who will be searching for you, right? But do we know what the average is? It depends. Because each brand, the number of people searching for you, it depends. But on average, like if I'm connected with you on social media, it's about 2.8 times, it's about 3 times higher. So when there's more people searching about you on Google, it obviously means that they are aware of you also. Uh, fourth question to ask is, do you have known key competitors um, about your company? So again, if I go back to Zara, who are some of Zara's uh, competitors, ladies? Who are Zara's competitors? H&M, okay. Who else? Shop. Shop. 
they are fresh, 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 fresh. Then you are able to track like, okay, today there are 30 people that says fresh. Tomorrow there are 60. So you are able to track like your effectiveness of your social media campaign. How many of your Facebook fans say fresh? Because the word fresh only you only publish it on Facebook, so it's exclusive, right? Uh, if you can't create any coupons, then what you do is the social only offer clicks, which means this only applies if you have e-commerce sites. So if they go to your website and they buy, you're able to track from uh, GA, Google Analytics. Third one is, do you have assess of your GA? Is it? Do you have assess? Yeah. Do you have access to web analytics data? So again, I'm referring to Google Analytics. If you have, what you can do is again, pretty much the same. Uh, you track your traffic from Facebook or your so other social media platforms. If people from Facebook are coming to your website and they are specifically looking on sales related or sales oriented pages on your website. What are sales oriented pages on your website? Pages like contact us. Pages like, if you, are, you run, like, how many of you run like creative agencies here? Nobody, okay. If you, right? You run a creative agency. I don't know why I name anymore. Okay. So if you run a creative agency and some, somebody checks out your website, they look at the portfolio. If they look at the portfolio, the likelihood of the psychology is that maybe they might want to buy it, which is why they're there. The same for your contact us page. Why? Because they have a response. They want to call you, which is why, you know, it's there. Yeah, I mean, which is why they're there. Um, fourth question is, is there social chatter about your company? So how you measure this is again pretty much uh, the same as brand awareness, but you add one more step. So I'll go back to the Zara example. So say a month you have uh, 800 people talking about Zara before your campaign or during your campaign. Now, in order to track your sales from social media, you want to see, you want to track not just before mentioning about it, Zara, but also sales related words. What do I mean by sales related words? Like words like bought or buy or recommend. This, this really takes a lot of time to find out which, which are the right words. So if for example, people say I bought something from Zara today, this counts as one mention. If somebody says, again, on, another person says, oh, I'm looking for product recommendations by Zara then that's another, another one altogether. So you can track, like, are they talking about you on socially, on, on, on Facebook, on Twitter, and all that. Get that? Right. Fifth one is, uh, is the same as this, just that you measure it against your competitors. So H&M and Topshop. So if every month they're about, say, about... 20 people that's talking about this, then you want to measure again with your competitors, how many of them are talking about them, like buying, having buying related messages. Because once you have that, again you can measure a uh, number of conversations that they're saying. Like, it's, it's pretty much the same in traditionally, like if I ask them, like, have you bought something from Zara? Right. Then, if you say yes, then there's a conversation that's going on. And if there's conversations that's going on, it's a sales related conversation because they're asking me to buy something, right? So then this is something that we can track as well. Uh, last way to measure customer loyalty. Again, the first question you ask is do you have name and email addresses? So once if you have again, you point over to your to Floatown or to a CRM system and find out like what's their recurring uh, buying rate. Like if they buy, say people from Facebook tend to buy three, four times from you. And uh, as compared to somebody else who is not connected on Facebook, then you you know like what's the what's the buying power over there. Uh, second question is is there social chatter about your company? Now this is pretty much uh, like what I mentioned, you measure the same brand but you measure only the positive mentions this time. So it's like Zara, what are, what are some positive words that people could associate with Zara? So if there's more, there's increase in positive mentions with your brand, then it means that people, they, when somebody's loyal to you, they like to talk good stuff about you, positive stuff about you, right? So it makes sense, uh, this is something that you want to measure as well. 
Third question that you want to ask yourself is, are there websites uh, where your company is rated or reviewed? In Singapore, what are some review sites that we have for F&B, for example? Review sites for F&B. Sorry? Hungry Go. Yeah, Hungry Go is one. What else? I eat, I vlog, I shoot or something. Yeah, I eat, I shoot, I vlog. I eat, Hungry Go is one. Post, I shoot. What else? Post, I vlog. Social media. Yeah, all those. So if you are in that in Singapore, I think one of the most popular review sites are always food related. So this really applies for restaurants. Um, you can apply if you run even the hospitality business um, trip advisor also could be one one place. So doing you want to measure again before your social media campaign and during your social media campaign. Now if before you typically get about two three star reviews at on average, then you want to measure during your campaign and post campaign. Do you have maybe four stars or five stars after that? If you have more increase in in number of stars ratings you get then it obviously means that people are getting more loyal to you because, again, goes back to the second question, they are talking positively about you. Uh, fourth question to ask is, are you creating content? Yes, of course, yes. Then you want to measure the number of engagement that you have. So what do you mean by engagement? Like, um, say if I go to Facebook, like, you want to measure how, like, because if, if people are loyal to you, they also like to talk to you. Customers especially. So, why I think are one of the companies where we work with, and then we, like, as you can see through the conversations over here, let me just ask a simple question like, what do you like about my uh, being Twitter? And then they, they say this, like, you can see over here, live example, somebody's talking positively about the hospital. So, you get 5,000 calls on average per month. Now, what you measure is, once you go onto social media, right, you measure again. How much calls do you have per month? Because how much does it cost really on average to pick up a call uh, for customer service? This is something that you have to measure because no, no, not everybody has the right answer to it. So say on average you get about each call to pick up costs about a dollar because it lasts so long, especially if it's sync out. So it, it costs one dollar. So your customer service expenses plus your your staff and all that, it might amount to say a month you're paying about. Fifty thousand dollars for customer service, but you measure then that's your data over there. And then the next thing that you measure is when you go onto social media, right? You measure how many calls do you have per month. Is there a reduction in number of calls? And then if, if there is, then it's good. If if there are more calls, then it's bad. Obviously, then social media might not be so right because if they are flaming your brand so much on social media, then they're calling you even more. That means you are you are really a, uh, I don't know what to say. You really have to apologize to your customers. Uh, at the same time, you can also measure not just measure the number of calls per month, but number of staff uh, that is managing your social media campaigns for customer service, and then compare it against like, do you really need say each month you need about fifty staff, um, and you pay them salary, and then is there a reduction in number of staff? that is being required to pick up the phones once you're on social media because on Twitter, what's the maximum amount of length you can complain about? 140 characters. <coughs> on Facebook, it won't go any longer than an A4 page. Hardly. <coughs> it's pretty long. So that's number five. Number six is pretty much the same as number four. If, you're, if you have your own Facebook page, you want to measure the, the amount of uh, participation that you get within your Facebook page is like the same as the Mount Avenue Hospital that I shared with you. If it's like a lot of people are talking about you, but of course Frank comes from, from a point where you can pay them. But quite frankly for us, we didn't pay anybody. So if there are more people talking positively, this is something which can be measured as well. Uh, there's one more thing which I want to add also. What you do is, you can either do this via a EDM. So what you do is you ask them one question, like on a scale of one to ten, how likely are you to recommend our our product or service to a friend or colleague? Right. So what you do is you take your nines and tens because if somebody answers nine or ten, that means they are very likely to 
recommend, right? So you measure a 9 and 10. You remove the 6 and 7. Because when somebody says, when I answer this, answer this question, oh, out of scale of 1 to 10, I say 7 that I recommend to a friend. But 7 is really neither here nor there because you just want to be nice. So you take out these two. And 1 to 5. 1 to 5 is really, you're not going to recommend uh, your product or service to a friend. So what you do is that you measure this. Um, you measure this. So these are people who will not recommend your product or service to a friend. And then you compare it with the number of people who are likely to recommend your product or services to a friend. And then from there, you're able to find out like, okay, I get a rough gauge of number of people, the word of mouth, right, the referral thing that's going on for my products or services. So if there's an increase in this before your campaign, after your campaign, then it's good. 